Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at something that's going on in Lord of the Rings Online or Lotro. Uh, what's going on here is the Harvest Festival, Harvest Math, the Halloween style festival with all sorts of spooky and haunted things happening. So what I want to do is I want to take you into the Haunted Burrow, which is one of the primary locations for this event. What I've already done is I've started by talking over here and just leap over things. Um, I've started by talking to our main quest giver, Rosa Hornblower, who, as you can see, is always surrounded by people right now because she's very popular this time of day. So uh, she has our wrapper quest, which we've already picked up, and she's also the main barterer. Now, you can find barterers in other locations as well, but uh, because she's here where there's everything going on, then, you know, that's where everybody, everybody wants to talk to her. Um, oh, there's one of the uh, sets of cosmetics that just ran by. Oh, and she's got it too. So that's some of the new outfit stuff that you can buy with some of the festival tokens. So another reason why you might want to come and do the festival. Okay, let's take a look around here. This is the haunted burrow that we're going to be going into. It is underneath Bag End, and in theory, there are all sorts of treasures in here that uh, Bilbo may have tucked into corners and such. So that's why all these hobbits are here, is because they're somehow involved in wanting to look for these treasures. So each of these person, you'll see they have rings. Um, they have various quests they want you to do. Uh, this person has the, uh, see so this is um, Aldegrim Goodbody, and he's got um, a puzzle for you. It's called a riddle in a bottle. And there'll be a table where there's different colored bottles and you have to read the riddle on the wall and it helps you figure out which one of those bottles that you're supposed to drink from. You do that. If you get it right, you get a buff. And if you get it wrong, you are um, slowed down. And you have to go to a, a series of different tables throughout the burrow and get the riddles correct and then come back out and turn it in to him. We are not going to do that right now. Uh, I don't have that one memorized, so that one's a little bit harder for me to do. All right, Begonia Grub over here, her quests actually are not specific to the haunted burrow. What she wants to do is she has this really cute story and you should read that about basically how they came up with trick-or-treating. Um, so they want people to dress up in costume and they want them to go and pick treats up from people's houses. So this is how you get those welcome mats or the mats that go onto your front door of your housing that have the different kinds of treats. So I'll show you right here. We'll go ahead and pick up this quest. So she's got this idea. Uh, we're going to accept it. We'll talk to her again. And she's like, great, you're going to do it. Well, if you haven't got a costume, I have some things here, some, you know, this old thing that you can try on. And uh, here you go, she says. So you're going to get a title. You get a set of two costumes that they have a timer on them and they last for, I believe, an hour. You get a doormat. Uh, and when you open up that box, it gives you one of the, I believe, eight doormats that you can, uh, that might show up. And five festival tokens, which is nice because most of these only give you three festival tokens. So hers is a little bit of a bonus. So if we go ahead and look at our inventory here, you'll see there's the grab bags and uh, where you'll get the fun little silly costume. And then here's our doormat. So boom, this one gave us the Mad Baggins Gold. Um, so if you go to somebody's house and they have one of these mats out in front of their house and you are wearing a costume, either one of these from a grab bag or one of the ones you can buy with mithril coins, uh, you then you know touch it and it gives you the treats. Maybe we'll do some trick or treating later. All right, so we have completed that quest. She also has another quest that we can get from her, and this is where you actually go trick-or-treating. So she wants you to go and collect six treats while you're in costume. So we're going to go ahead and accept that quest because we'll do that at some point, but we're not gonna do it right now. All right, over here, Mogo Brace, Brace Girdle has these costumes that we were just discussing. So those are all the ones that are available for Mithril Coins, and there used to only be like four, I believe, and they hugely expanded the number of costumes that you can get. It's, it's really cool, including um, 
uh, Tom Bombadil and Gandalf and all sorts of cool things. But also from this person, you can get, oh, you can also buy a doormat in a box if you want to have extras and uh, more uh, costume grab bags. So if you don't want to buy one of these costumes from Mithril and you want to have more of these silly costumes that you can throw on, the costumes you get in a bag don't come, don't look like this. In fact, I'll just go ahead and put a costume on just so you can see. So it puts on something random out of, I think, three or four options. There we go. I now, I don't know what costume that is, but there we go. I'm, um, I'm wearing a costume. So if I were to go trick-or-treating right now, that uh, I am in costume, so I would be able to pick up the treats. So there you go. Alrighty. Oh, and if you log out while you're in costume, it shows you in that when you log back in again. So that's kind of funny. There's kind of like a punk rocker one and uh, there's a bunch of silly ones. Okay. So let's keep moving on here. Whole fast burrows over here. He won't recognize me now. I'm in costume. He has misplaced some tr thing. Oh no, sorry. He wandered in and he thought there would be treasures and instead of jewels at the bottom of various jars and whatnot he found the most horrible things instead sticky cold wet terrifying things unnatural things and so when he came back out from to get some fresh air from looking for treasures he realized he had lost some of his things so he wants you to go back and look through these piles of goo and really and cobwebs and some gross stuff um, and find his things for him we are not going to take that quest right now, but now you know what that is all about. So over here, um, this is the one we are going to do uh, in a moment. So she wants you to, she has a number of different quests that you can take from her. Uh, so to start off, the only one she has available is a stroll through the haunted burrow. So basically she wants you to go to all the different rooms in the haunted burrow um, on, in, and find um, Find, she left like a, a trinket in each room to, as proof that you have gone and visited. So she wants you to go collect those items of proof that you have visited these rooms and come back to her. When you take the stroll through the haunted burrow, you get 20 minutes. So it's a good amount of time to be able to go through and find these rooms. And that's a great one to start with when you're first starting these quests, because it gives you the opportunity to go through and, and explore and try to figure out how to get in and out of these various rooms. So we're going to come back and do that here in just a moment. All right. So poor May Gamji over here. She has lost some of her friends. They're in there. <laughs> so she wants you to go find them make sure they're okay polo proudfoot he has three different quests for you and this is great i really enjoy doing his quests actually so he went into the haunted burrow searching for treasure and he found whatever it is he found in this case in the attic he found a bit of chain uh he thought maybe it would open a door to the ceiling so he pulled on it but instead a living walking skeleton came toward him rattling and clanking and it gave him a fright and he ran out so he wants you to go and find the source of this, of what's going on over there. So we're going to come back and we're going to do some of those. Um, let's see, what else? So those are the main folks that you're going to find here at the Haunted Burrow area. Um, so we're going to, I'm just going to go and show you over here. You've got a couple other folks you can talk to. Uh, you've got your dance leader, if you still have some dances you need to learn. You've got uh, Baldo Budfoot, who is always very interested in the horse racing thing. So you can accept that. And then also we've got uh, Bingo Boffin, who has a quest for us to do. So we're going to actually go ahead and pick this up. It is Frightful Tales to Curl the Hair on Your Toes. So he's happy to see that we've taken a break from our adventuring to celebrate the Harvest Festival. Ta -da! Um, one of his favorite times of the year, his cousin Prisca, who we have met along the journey, has brought her children to visit. And so they're all, as a family, enjoying the sights and the sounds of the Harvest Festival. But, of course, you know, people have wandered off and they have various things that they are interested in seeing you do. So when we accept this quest, it's going to then show uh, the, the various family members that we see here on the side are going to be here at the festival area and we can interact with them and they give us quests to do also. <clears throat> now this is a one-time thing or once a year, technically. Uh, so once you have done their quest and moved on in this quest chain and this storyline, um, you won't see them anymore in that same spot. So just to give you a heads up there, so you don't 
get surprised that, you know, Prisca's gone missing, uh, for example. So she's right there. We're not going to do that right now, but we are now notice that uh, Dino Das Boffin is now here. We're going to talk to him. And basically he said um, he was quite surprised that they weren't going to Mickle Delving to visit Bingo, but to Hobbiton and take part in the Harvest Festival. Now, he's, you know, like, there are some good things about festival that are worthwhile, for sure. Good crops and the promise of plenty, definitely worth celebrating. But he has no patience for the rest of it. The spooks, the haunts, the frights, silly rubbish and nonsense, he says. And uh, so, Bingo is set on sharing spooky stories, and so there's no getting out of that. But while they wait, he says, I might as well see what this haunted burrow is all about and what's going on. I'll meet you inside. So we go ahead and accept that. Now, a couple things to point out here. This quest requires access to the haunted burrow, which we had to do a cellar door appears. So we did that in a previous video. So if you haven't done that, you're not gonna be able to go in, even though you would be able to pick up this quest. So do make sure that you do that first. All right, but Dino Das does not is the name of this quest. So we're gonna do that. And at the same time, we're gonna talk to Poppy Cotton here. Now notice she says only one haunted burrow quest may be underway at a time. That is true. However, in this case, Dino Das's quest does not count as a haunted burrow quest. So we're able to double dip on that one. And I do that a lot of times when I'm getting a character through the beginning part of the bingo quest, because you're going to end up in the same place. So you might as well do them together. Okay, so we're going to take her stroll, just did. Now, one of the things that's kind of cool about this, oh, I've already gone and moved it, is there is a deed, and we'll pull it up in a bit. Uh, and doing the stroll through the Haunted Burrow is one of the parts of the deed. Okay, so we've walked in, and remember when I was talking about the drinks and the riddle? There's your riddle, there's your drinks. Like I said, we're not going to do that one, but that's so you know where to get started. We just walked in the door. Let's take a look at the map. So you'll see we are right here. Now, ready for some spoilers? All right. Let's get a spoiler up here. Where'd you go? That's not it. There's my spoiler. So there are a couple of maps that I really like, and especially at the beginning of the season when I'm kind of getting reoriented and trying to find things, or if I'm doing a quest through here that I don't remember where to find things very often. This is uh, straight off of the Lotro Wiki. So you'll find this on the LotroWiki.com. Uh, you can see the URL right there. Um, where we are right now is we just started, we just came in here into the main part of the cellar. You can see that right there. Um, there are doors all over the place. Some of them lead to places, some of them don't. Some of them are locked, some of them are locked unless you're on a certain quest. So there's a lot of um, chaos and confusion. And I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this, right? Is to take you through some scary stuff and get you kind of turned around and you know let you get a little scared and nervous as you're wandering through this. So you know, go for the frights idea is, is the whole point of this. But I like to have maybe a little bit more control over <laughs> what's going on around me. So I, I like to use the maps, and especially once I get oriented, I don't need them as much, but they're very useful. So these are all the various things that are, are different quests you can do. You've got the scared hobbits we mentioned. We've, um, oh, I didn't talk about, but there's a quest for um, the In League that tells you where that's located. Um, so the, that's what all this, this uh, stuff is going over on the side here. That's our, our index. Once you kind of understand what's going on, you may want to see more visually, oh, hey, if I were to try and do this quest, I want to go here to here to here to here to here, right? So there's another map, um, and Fibro Jedi has a link to this on his website, and this is a little bit more information than maybe you're ready to tackle when you first start with this. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and show you this because if you are you know, running through here and you've got some more experience, but you're still having a hard time finding where things are specifically, this is another set of maps that can be really useful to you. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I showed you those. So we're going to go ahead and in this area, there's kind of two hallways that lead away from the front door. There's a hallway over here, and you'll see there's a bookshelf which opens up and moves. Or if I were to go the other direction, we have the same similar thing, a bookshelf that opens and moves. 
So for this one, we are going to start by going this direction. One where I want to go first thing is to the attic. So notice I ran all the way to the end here and we've got a couple of doors here. We're going to ignore those for the moment, take a right turn and kind of zigzag right over here. This is the door to the attic. We're going to start there. Okay. So now our map, Oh, well, that didn't help. Well, we'll look at the map again in a minute. All right, we are in the attic. Our hobbit boffin that we were looking for is here. And he says, you know, lots of burrows don't have attics since, you know, they're burrowed into the ground. And, um, but this one is no more frightening than I would expect of the usual sort, he says. You know, he, he talks about the paint is peeling and he, he tries to be very disdainful of it, right? I'm not scared at all. No, 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 not scary at all. All right, but if we keep going forward, here's our attic trophy. I think she left maybe a bag, a satchel here. So we're going to grab that. So now we have come straight from the door forward zoop, over to here. And now if we turn to the left, we'll see the door that leads us out of here. And that's the main cellar door. So we came in, went straight, took a left to get out. Okay. So now we're back into the main area and you'll see, here we go. We've started to explore the main haunted burrow cellar. All right, so we're gonna take a turn. Remember how we kind of zigzagged to get over to here? We're gonna zigzag back to where we saw those two doors. Remember when we came in, we saw these two doors? This one here is the one we want. Now, this is really funny because that says cobweb wing. That says cobweb wing. One of those is correct. One of those is false. We want the one on the left. So we're gonna go into here. Beep. Now we are in the cobwebbed wing. Now you'll notice that as you go through, uh, there's sometimes effects that happen to you like that right there. There, sometimes you can see the spots on the ground where the effects happen, but sometimes you'll just get to kind of know the, like the sticky spots and that's one of them. And notice now I've got like, you know, cobwebs hanging off of me. Okay. So now we've come in, we've turned the corner. Now, unfortunately on our map, it doesn't show us where the walls are. So you kind of have to get used to knowing just where the walls are. But, all right, so let me go back to the beginning. Although I don't want to go too far. I don't want that stupid spider again. So we came in here, we walked forward and there's nowhere else to go. So we turned left. Now the Hobbit we're looking for is straight ahead of us, but he's not going to be there in the future as our guidepost. So we're going to go ahead and talk to him now, but again, he won't be there in the future. Okay, but he doesn't find this scary again, right? Okay, so we're going to take, again, another left. This is the one that's probably the most confusing out of all the rooms, I think. I think. We'll see. Okay, so we've turned left. We got hit by a spider. Yeah, yeah. Takes a minute. All right, now we can move. We're going to take another left. Watch her get hit by a spider. And now we're in this room, but if we take a right, if you hover over it, you'll notice that this is a false door. It's a hidden doorway. So that's where we want to go. Now, we've turned. Now we want to turn right. And there's the trophy we're looking for. Now, somebody has said that you can actually get to the trophy without having to come into this hidden room, but I like coming into the hidden room because what's the point of a hidden room if you don't go and check it out? So we have gone into our fun little hidden room. Uh, fun thing. See this uh, picture, not picture, hanging on the wall? Um, that you can get that through the festival. There's ways that you can get stuff and that's one of the stuff items you can get. Okay. So we looked at our, our trophy there. We picked that up. Now we're going to go back the way we came. So now we want to go just one door frame and turn and there's our doorway. When I first get started every year, I go two door frames and then I can't figure out why I can't get out. That's why you don't want to go all the way there. You just want to go one door frame. There's your door. Go back out. You probably get hit by a spider on your way out. Just be prepared for that. Notice there's a bear scene going on over here. We'll come back to that. That's another quest. Okay. So now we have gotten to this point and the map shows us that we have, we've filled in most of the map. There's a piece there that's pretty much identical to the piece here. This is where we're trying to go to get out. Okay. So once I can get back up again, <laughs> those darn spiders. All right. We're going to go this way. And again, two doors. Oh, we have a jumpy outy thing. So, you know, you're in the right place. We've got two doors, that one and that one. They both say creeping wing, but again, the door on the left is the one we want. Okay. Now we're in the creeping wing. We need to find another, um, another trophy. This is the easiest one to go through if you're just doing this, because we have gone forward. 
There is our trophy. If we look slightly to our left, also uh, Dino Das is here as well, and he's like, "Hey, do you think they're trying to scare us? Because these glowing vials could be filled with anything, which causes the imagination, imagination to run." But um, you know, it caused me to see this crudely painted mask and know it for what it is—just a mask. If it was darker in here, perhaps I would think it was a real goblin, but not what I can see it so clearly. It's not frightening at all. Not at all. Somehow, methinks he doth protest too much. All right, so we have our creeping wing trophy. And you'll notice this door next to us open, which is fine, because that's where we want to go. This takes us to the basement. I'm going to take a quick little side side here. There are barrels here. If you hover over them, you'll notice that it lights up. We're going to pop into here and we find a poorly hidden chest. Um, let's see. And we got from this uh, a couple of the consumables that you can do where basically you click on another player and you press, you know, you use this and it, it does things to them. So, uh, and the consumables, you can buy more of them from the Festival Barters. I think it's 300 times to do it, and then you get a permanent version. So this is one way you can get some of those silly things. Okay, so we've popped into here, and we've grabbed one of the chests. There are four chests you can actually get. So let me step back here. We started right here, and we went into there. Now you'll notice that over here we have an effect on us, Secret Treasure Chest. This chest you can only open once every 24 hours. So it's not at the server reset, it's at 24 hours. So you want to kind of keep in mind that you want to come back and grab that every 24 hours. Sometimes it's tokens, sometimes it's uh, uh, furniture or um, like spooky trees, um, various things you can get out of that chest. Okay, we are going to work our way out of the basement. Now here's where the map is less helpful because we came... I always think of things as coming from this direction, so I want the map to be facing up. Unfortunately, this map is facing down, so you have to kind of almost do everything backwards in your mind, or you just memorize it. Here's what we do. We're going to follow the barrels. So, and I don't mean the sparkly things. I mean the casks on the wall. So we've gone to this corner. We have barrels on this side. We're going to follow those. We've got to a wall. We're going to turn. Now, we want to go to this set of barrels, so you have to make almost like a U-turn when you get here. When you're coming through the first time, thankfully, you'll see the Hobbit here. He kind of helps you navigate, right? And he talks about how the basement is damp and all these things, but, you know, it would have to be much more dark and maze-like to scare this Hobbit, I'll tell you that. All right, so we've seen him. Now we're going to follow these barrels, and we're going to follow them some more. And now we can't go anywhere except for there's a room here or the exit there. So uh, we're not too lost at this point, right? So we want to go ahead and grab that trophy. So we've got that. And there's a, an effect happening in the area. Again, we have two doors. This time we want the one on the right, the last one, the last door. Okay, now we're back to the haunted burrow. And we can see on our map, we, we went over here to get to the attic. We went over here to get to the one of the wings, which then we've been here. Oh, sorry, that took us into here, which then we popped out here. This popped us here. We just went straight across the corner, which brought us then back out. Oh, we went through the basement and brought us out to here. So remember how I said we have basically two hallways with uh, bookcases, and they lead back out to here. This is where we want to go. So we're just going to go straight ahead. And see, there's the bookcase. We went, oh, now it's gone dark because we stepped over an effect. But that bookshelf is where we're headed. So if you just go toward the bookshelf, eventually you'll get out of that effect area. And we just kind of zigzagged our way back. So, zoom, zoom, zoom. All right, now we have to turn this in. Can't click on her. <laughs> there we go. And she's going to give us three festival tokens. All right, so because that completed that particular item, if we go into the deed log, we have the thing called the Haunted Burrow. And this one, you have to complete each one of these items once. Once you do that, you get a title called the Burrower. It doesn't give you any festival tokens, but at least it's a deed. And, you know, it's one more, you know, feather in your cap, right? So we now have from Poppy. We just did a stroll. Can't do that again for till server reset. But we can do a race through the Haunted Burrow. The first time she gave us 20 minutes. 
This time we have, I think it's four minutes. So I'm not going to talk through it too much. I'm just going to run through it. But I'll talk you through what I'm doing. So back in. We're going to see the bottles turn. We're going to go back. So we got to go through the bookshelf. Keep going past the double doors. Zigzag to the attic. In the attic, go grab the trophy. Again, you've got effects on you. Uh, things that go dark, things that fly around you. You just go right past it. All right, zoom, zoom, we got in and out. We're back into the main burrow. We zigzag, go to this door. Now we're in the cobweb wing. Lots of spiders, possibly gonna knock us down. Ooh, not yet so far. There we go. I knew somebody was gonna slow us down. Pepper pots, that's cute. Uh, all right, so there's our hidden door. We're gonna zip in here to the right. There's our cobweb on the wall. Okay, back, first doorway. There's our hidden door or sliding wall. Ooh, I expected a spider. Awesome, that helps our time. Again, we want the one on the left. If you take the other one, it just brings you right back to where you were, which is really annoying. All right, remember this one? We just cut the corner, so we hardly see this wing at all right now. We'll come back another time for other things. And the door right next to us that we want to get out. Boom. There's where we got the special thing. Here's where we follow the barrels. Take a U-turn and zigzag. Make a U-turn, except we're going to grab this first. because we have to prove that we came through here. Second door, and again, more barrels on the side so you know you're in the right place. Now we're back to the main. We have done everything. Return to Poppy Cotton with proof of your expedition and get back before time runs out. So zigzag, find the bookshelf, go through, zigzag, out to the main door. Wait for loading, and we did that in about, what, two minutes? So it is possible to get through there reasonably quickly. You just have to know where you're going and kind of stay focused on that. But it is possible to get that one done. I know I failed that a number of times the first time I was trying it. Um, last year was the first time I did this festival. Um, and I did fail that a number of times. But once you kind of get the pathing, you kind of, it, it makes it a little bit easier. And there is kind of a, a pathing that, um, I've, that a couple of us actually like to use. Um, I have misplaced my words. Hold on. Oh yeah. Okay. So you kind of, you start with the main and then you go to the attic, which I kind of showed you before. Let me pull this up on the, um, hang on just a moment. There we go. So, um, yeah, this map's all right. Well, so remember we go in here and we go up through the bookshelf and zigzag to the attic. The attic is over here on, on this map. So we come in the attic, we grab the item, we go out the door, Follow the, which brings us back in where we left. Zigzag, come through here, cobweb wing, boom, uh, round, around, around, through the fake door in here, back out, back up this way, and which, now if you take the wrong door, it just brings you right back to there, <laughs> which is annoying. If you take the right door, sorry, the left door, uh -huh. Um, then that takes you down to the creeping wing, which you're then able to just kind of go straight across, pick up the thing that brings you back to the basement. You zigzag through the, uh, the hidden bookshelf, which is not showing there. Oh, sorry. That's basement, uh, basement. Oh, that's where we follow the barrels, barrel, 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 barrels on the side, grab your trophy, head out, which then brings us back to the main. We come down through the hidden bookshelf. And back out. So once you kind of get that down, it's a little easier, but getting that down at first can be a little uh, frustrating, <laughs> I think. All right, we're going to drop that. So let me show you another quest. So Polo Proudfoot, Puddyfoot, sorry, over here, he's the one that he had various things happening. So like there was a rattling in the, um, in the attic and you know it's skeleton came walking toward him and he wants us to go check this out so we're going to go back in to the attic and remember the attic isn't that hard to get to because it's the one where we turn right here 
and go up this hallway, basically. Ignore those doors for the moment. Keep going, past the double doors, turn, zigzag, attic, right there. And remember the attic is pretty rectangular, so we don't get too lost in here either. We have the chains that we're gonna rattle. Rattle, rattle, rattle. And oh no, something is coming. Rattle, clack, I'm coming for you. I'll haunt you forever. Ha, ha, ha. You may guess that this guy is maybe not as fearsome as he looks. Oh no, it was only a hobbit playing a silly prank. So now we get to go back. Oh, there's one of the effects. All the bats coming down. That one's funny. All right, so now we leave and we're back in the main burrow. And we're gonna just zigzag, remember, straight down through the bookshelf. Back to the main door. And we're out. Um, so yeah, he just was scared by a hobbit in costume trying to just be silly. It was a hobbit in disguise. Who was it? I shall give him a telling off. He'll not forget any time soon. So he has three of those types of quests. So this one is in the cobwebbed wing. So we're going to pop in there. Now, one thing you can do is take that path like we did before with the race. But for this particular one, um, for those other two that he has, actually, we can kind of shortcut that a little bit. So cobweb wing, remember, was this door right here. So we're going to just go straight there. Oh, and get hit by a spider. Now, the only problem with these three quests that he has is if you are doing them, they're, uh, they're, they line up sequentially in a sense in, the, in that you can't do them at the same time as somebody else. So you might pick up the quest and they might pick up the quest, you know, from the quest, come in here and interact with the Hobbit. And then, you know, you don't get credit because you didn't actually get the, in order in that. So you just have to kind of sometimes do it, more, you know, wait for it to come around again. No big deal. Okay. So when this is the one where we had to find the hidden wall, and remember we went over there to find the hidden wall, uh, but instead we go, oh, hang on, I just had this. Nope, not there. All right, hang on, we came in. So if I get turned around, I gotta start all over. <laughs> okay, I came in. Whoosh, whoosh. Ah, there he is, he's in, oh, he's in the same room as the hidden wall, that's right. So turn left, turn left, turn left. There's a jar of honey. So, because there's our hidden wall. But no, no, what's this? A bear in the middle. Oh no, and he's hungry. Yeah. Not so much. I usually just put auto attack on. <laughs> Let it happen. It was only a hobbit playing a silly prank. I'm just a hobbit, don't hurt me. And he runs off. And now we go back out. Now, I'm sure there's a shortcut to get out of here. And that is one of the th places where I kind of fall down on this. Because I'll bet there is a door somewhere in that wing that would have taken us directly out. But you know what? This is also good practice for remembering how to get through. So that's okay too. Remember, it's the second door there. Boom. Now we're back in the main burrow. Down the funny hallways, find the bookshelf, and then we're back by the door. We're gonna go turn that in. And pick up his third one, which I know you're shocked at what might happen here. But he was, uh, he saw a candle to help him see, he went to pick it up and suddenly a ghost chased him away. Yes, a real ghost hiding in the shadows. Don't look at me like that. I tell you it was real. All right, if you don't believe him, go see for yourself. Well, we'll go see for ourselves. So I know how to shortcut getting to a place. I just don't know how to shortcut getting back. So now we are gonna take this door. So as we were coming up, there was a creeping wing door there. There's a creeping wing door here. And then there's the funny bookshelf. The second creeping wing door will actually get us directly into the creeping wing which is where we want to go this is the one where he's not near the door so instead of turn coming in and taking a left we come in and go right 
and then right, and there's the candle that we want. Oh no, something is coming. Ooh, be frightened. You'll never guess. It's only a hobbit in an outfit. I know you're shocked. Okay, so we want to get back out of here. So we did a right turn, right turn. So we're going to take a left turn and a left turn. And there you'll see the door we came in. And remember, this is the one where we usually just cut the corner. So we're going to cut the corner back over here. And there's the basement. And then again, good practice on how to get in and out of the basement. I think the basement was the one that took me the longest to figure out. And now we're back to the main burrow. Scary jumpy outy thing. Bookshelf. Door. Out. Okay, we'll go turn that in. Yes, there you are, sir. I know. It's shocking. It was just a hobbit. So already we're at, what, nine? Nine out of ten activities for today. So that's pretty awesome. We're going to go ahead and do one more. We'll go ahead and do Mei Gamji here. So this is the one where her friends, they thought they were going on an adventure together and look for Billow's treasures. And then one by one they disappeared and then she was all alone. And she made it out, but they're still inside. And she can only imagine what a horrible nightmare they must be having. So she's asked us to go in and look for them. So we're going to go do that. While we're there... I'm going to show you another thing. Okay, so this is one of the ones where I don't have it memorized. So what I like to do is pull up the map and we're gonna pull up actually the wiki map. I like that one just a little bit better. Um, so the yellow dots are the hobbits that, are, that we're looking for. So there's one here, one up here, one over here on this, in this floor. So we can get three of them out of the way just right off the bat. There's one in the attic, and there's one in the cobweb wing. There's none in the basement. Oh wait, my bad, sorry. There's one in the basement. Uh, there's none in the creeping wing, but we still go through there anyway. Okay, so we're gonna start, actually we could start, let's start by getting this one out of the way. So, oops, let me put that down, sorry. Okay, so we're going to go in here, and as you saw on the map, he's kind of like around the corner here, which is actually literally what we're doing. Around the corner. Ta-da! Found our scared hobbit. So, from a map perspective, we're in the dark bottom corner down here, right? Fake door. Don't pay any attention to that. Fake door. I think. All right, we're going to go back to the beginning, and then we're going to do our normal trail over here to get to the attic door over to the attic because remember we saw that there is a hobbit hiding in the attic a scared hobbit and they are you may have seen them a couple other times we passed through here just get over here by the door so they put on a cloak to sneak around and frighten their friends but now they're lost so, so we have found one hobbit there so we go back out now we're back in the main burrow uh, the main portion so we're not well yeah Okay, we'll just go ahead and continue through. So cobweb wing, just like we're doing the race. Boom, boom, boom. Oop, got to run into that. So now, do we have anybody in the cobweb wing? We have one in that spot that we haven't been to yet, right? So let me show you where that is. So remember, we have to take a left turn and then a left turn. And this is normally where we go into the wall. But instead, if we continue straight on, this is that area that we haven't been to yet, you see. And that's why. Oops, let me close you down. There we go. Hello, scared hobbit. Yes, they thought they had it down a left and right and a left and a left and a left and a left. They're, I don't know. Yeah, that's why they're lost. All right, but we found three of them. So now we just come back out of that spot and we're just gonna go kind of straight across. Oops, well, aside from spiders. Oh, knocking us down. Oh, I should turn that quest in so he doesn't keep showing up. Otherwise, you're going to think he's always there and he's not. Okay, so now we're in the creeping wing. Do we have anybody in the creeping wing to find? 
we do not. So we can just cut the corner and go through. And now we're in the basement. We do have one in the basement to find. And they are, where are you in the basement? Let's see, we came in here. Oh, okay, so they're like a U-turn kind of from where we are, but a big U-turn, not a little one. So we want to go, I believe not here. Oh wait, no, I'm wrong, it is here. All right, there we go. Yeah, so she's, <laughs> she's been found. So these little green puddles that you see on the ground, that's what you have to put your hand into when you're looking for that guy's lost stuff. Um, which is one of the reasons why I kind of pause on that and come back to that later. I don't do that one every day. I don't, I find that one's kind of gross. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see, we've got two more hobbits to find. Wait, who did I miss? Well, I think we've got, well, I know we've got at least one in here, maybe two. Okay, so here's an area that we haven't gone to yet, and I'll show you why. Uh, there is a hobbit over here. And oh, another effect. Fun. Okay, so we have a hobbit back here. She says she's scared, but she's having a good time looking through the books. So there we go. She seems to be doing all right. Um, so now we're up in this top corner. And you'll notice there was a door over here. Mystery door. We're going to go take a look. Because this leads you along a part that is in the burrow mystery door that takes you back out uh, not where we want to go anyway here there are three chests so we're gonna start with this one and when you see other people in here you kind of queue up but some people just leave alts lying around here and just kind of pop in and out so if they're not doing anything it seems like it's okay to go ahead and grab the chest but if there's a line just get in line and be polite you know be nice about it because you'll notice like it's it's disappeared because somebody grabbed it and then it'll show up again so and it's probably these folks are just waiting for their timers because now you'll notice remember we had that timer from before the 24-hour one well these let me get to someplace a little stable um these have a one hour timer on them and those three that were in here so what did i get for that um it looks like i got um tokens but you could also get, yeah, I got a festival token, a festival token, and a festival token. You can get things like the spooky trees and the wall hangings and things like that. So you'll see on the map that we now have a new area. So we're just going to follow it back to how we came in because we don't want to stop what we're doing. We just want to take a little sidetrack there. So now we're back in the main cellar. And remember, there's our um, scared hobbit. She's not that scared. She's an inquisitive hobbit, maybe. Okay, so now we want to go back. One of the things we're gonna find on our way back is darkness. But aside from darkness, we're getting a little lost. Hang on. Okay, here we go. Go south. There's the sticky outy thing. And then when we turn, there is our last scared hobbit. So she's kind of tucked away in a corner that you're not necessarily going to see if you come from the other direction. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I do her last because it seems easier to go find the older lady who's in the library and then come back this way because then she's right there and she's easier to find. Um, and she thought she found some treasure and now she's going to keep looking for more treasure. So her, I think our poor girl out front, she's not going to have many of her friends come back out anytime soon. Uh, bookshelf. Remember, bookshelves move open up and they become our passageway out. So there we go. Let's go let May know the good news, bad news that her friends aren't coming out right now. Maybe she'll go back in someday, she says. Okay, so we have done another event, another uh, quest in there. If you are a member of the In League, then Cora Brownlock here will have a quest for you. Uh, and, and you pick it up from her and it's basically go in, retrieve some wine and bring it back out to her. So I'll show you real quick where that is, but because I have not started the In League with this character, she doesn't have that. So basically we come in and do the left. We're gonna go to the left side. So we'll go through the bookshelf, more left. 
So we're just kind of zigzagging our way left and up, right? As we get to here, we're going to take a, another left and then make a huge U-turn left here. And if I had the quest available, this bottle of wine right here would be interactable. What you do is you grab it and you take a big drink of it. And then you get all the funny effects that you get when you've been uh, drinking in the game. So you have to basically wobble your way back out while you're carrying this bottle of wine and you take it back to the person sitting at the table. Um, so you just basically come in, grab the wine, have a drink, and then carry it back out, but with the effects. It's the same path back out that you came in. So, um, but now you know where to find it if you're looking for it. So you'll notice when we came in that I moused over this door and it has this thing. Sorry, there's a bird in the way. Uh, you must have a quest riddle in a bottle. That's the one where you have to figure out which one of the bottles is the one to drink. And then you do that and you get the buff. And then you have to find the riddle door to get to the next place. Uh, so that's why I don't do that one because I know the pathing to get in and out through the regular doors, but I don't know the pathing to get in and out through the riddle doors without having to look it up every time. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, that that's one of those that you'll run across though. So, okay, so we're gonna run back out as if we had the wine, but moving faster. And then we would come back out and she's still sitting at the table. So we would go take it to the table. Now the thing is it doesn't just auto drop when you run by her. You actually have to stop and click on her and then the quest window pops up. So, um, and of course, if you have the effects going on, there's two of her, and so you have to pick, you know, click on the kind of leftish one and, and get it right. Um, so that, that's something to keep in mind if you are doing that particular quest. But it's like 900 points with the league uh, reputation, so it's absolutely worth it if you are in the in-league and still working on your reputation. Oh, I forgot to talk to Dino to ask. Let's tell him that we... Went through, yes, he saw us in all these places, and he says, it doesn't seem very haunted, and it's all for show. Strikes me as very silly and not frightening at all, he says. Mm -hmm. So, um, he says, um, pretty much finishes that up, and he looks forward to the uh, scary stories and, and disproving bingo of uh, how scary they may or may not be. So, we'll finish that. So that quest line with the boffins, it, uh, you, you have the different boffins uh, standing around here. So for example, Priska is the mom and uh, her son that's always sleeping, he's fallen asleep somewhere. She wants us to go find him. Uh, we've got Esmeralda over here. She loves to dance. You might remember her, she was dancing on the rock. And um, she wants us to go and encourage people uh, who are standing around to, to join in the bashful festival goers. So that's another one you can do. So, so there's about mm, four, four of those, I think around this area of the, uh, bingo boffin line. And then you go back to him and he sends you on some other things. And, um, it's a cute storyline and I don't want to spoil it for you. So you'll definitely want to go through that one first and then pick up the second one. And most of the second one takes place in Wistmead, which is that other main location. Okay, so we have completed 10 quests though for today. So we can actually go back to Rosa and turn in a Spirited Harvest, which will get us five festival tokens because it is a wrapper. She says, come back tomorrow and I'll have more for you. So that's pretty much the end of what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you where the haunted burrow was, how you get around in there, um, and give you some idea on some uh, what some of the mapping might look like for getting through there. Because again, you've got a number of different quests to do. You've got, uh, if you're doing the bottle riddles, you've got the riddle doors that you use. You've got true doors, you've got uh, secret doors like these here. You've got fake doors, which don't take you where you're trying to go at all. Um, all sorts of various things going on in there. But now that you kind of hopefully have a little bit more context for what all of these things are, then hopefully, you know, you can make more use out of these various maps that are out here. And eventually maybe you'll get to the point where you don't need the maps at all, where it's very easy for you to just go in, zoom, 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 find everything and um, have a good time with the festival. So if you have any questions, uh, post in the comments or um, find me in the game. Happy to answer stuff in the game as well. And hopefully you'll have a really good time with this Harvest Festival, the Harvest Map. It, I think it's a lot of fun and I've been looking forward to it. So 
All right. Thank you so much. Have a great time. Talk to you later. Bye.